Okay, there's going to be a lot in this video today, so we're just going to jump into it and get going. Um, first thing we're going to talk about is the difference between two things. Uh, first thing is something that you're familiar with, distance traveled. Well, I spelled that wrong. doesn't matter. The next thing is something you may not be familiar with, so we're introducing a new term. That term is displacement. I can't draw these lines in any speed very well. Displacement and distance travel. So, distance traveled is, I gotta get the right thing, the length of the path that you follow. When we're talking about distance traveled, it's how far you go. When we're talking about displacement, it's the straight line distance from start to finish. The two things are slightly different, so let's start off with an example. You're going to start off there. We'll call that your house. We're going to go to friend one, and then friend two. So. If you begin at your house, the distance between your house and friend one, let's just say, is two miles. In between friend one and friend two is three miles. You're going to start off at your house. You're going to walk all the way to friend two's house because they're home first. When you get done hanging out there, you're going to walk back to friend one's house. So we're going to say that you start here and that you end here. <clears throat> now, distance traveled is the length of the path that you follow. Well, your path went two miles this way, then three miles, that's five miles total, and back eight miles. So in this case, your distance traveled two, three, and three is eight miles. You walked a total of eight miles. That's your distance traveled. But your displacement, your displacement is only, well, if you start here and you end here, straight line distance from where you start to where you end, your displacement is just two miles. All that matters for displacement is where you begin and where you end. Well, for displacement, there's another thing that we have to consider in the positive direction. When we talk about displacement, we need this piece. We call it magnitude. And the other piece, plus direction. In order to be as specific as possible about your position for displacement, we need how far you are and in what direction. Okay, so you are two miles in the positive direction from where you start. Displacement, and let's write this down to be more clear about things, tells us mostly about position. Now, <clears throat> There's a whole class of things that have magnitude and direction. They're called vectors. Any quantity where magnitude and direction are important is going to be a vector. <clears throat> Over here, while we're talking about distance traveled, that's not a vector. It's, it's not the opposite, but it's called a scalar. For a scalar, we just have magnitude.
it's going to become very important that we keep these two things apart. So we're going to look at a quick, another quick example. Oh, let's use choose this gray blue. Let's say we have a track. It's a 400 meter track. That's exactly what the track looks like if you didn't know. Let's say you start here. You go all the way around the track. And you finish at the same spot that you started at. Now, looking at this, your distance traveled. I should pause for a second and let you think about that. So I'll pause. You ready? Yeah. Your distance traveled is 400 meters. The path that you actually took all the way around was 400 meters. But your displacement, why don't you think about that for another second? Your displacement was zero meters. You didn't go anywhere. Looking at where you start and where you end, just those two X's, your displacement is zero. It's almost like you didn't go anywhere. This is our quick introduction to information about position and information about distance travel. The next thing that we talk about this is speed. and velocity. Our speed and velocity. Now, speed is a very simple definition. It's our distance traveled over the time it takes to travel that distance. Velocity is going to be displacement over time. So with speed we're using distance traveled which we just said was a scalar to calculate. Well speed is a scalar and velocity is a vector which means direction matters. Now, right now, when I say direction matters, I'm just talking about in the positive direction and in the negative direction. Next unit, we'll get into talking about very specific directions. So, let's look at a quick example um, about speed and velocity. In fact, I'll do the house thing again. Your house. Two miles away, his friend one's house, three miles beyond that, three miles, is friend two's house. So let's say the first leg of your trip, just like before, you go to friend two's house, and that takes you... Two hours to travel. That's a little bit unrealistic of a distance. You're in your car. It doesn't take you two hours to go five miles. And then let's say the next part of that, where you come back, only takes one hour. Now, to calculate the speed, speed is going to be equal to the distance traveled over our time. Our distance traveled is two plus three, so we have five here. And then we go back three. Our distance traveled is still eight miles. And we do the whole thing in three hours. So <clears throat> our speed is going to be eight divided by three. Eight thirds. 
since we don't like writing down eight thirds because no one can just remember what that is, we're going to get a decimal for it and say that it's 2.67 miles per hour. That is your average speed on this trip. I underlined it. That's what that means. For velocity, we're going to say it's our displacement, say delta x over time. Well, our displacement, we said, was positive 2 miles. Overall, we traveled positive 2 miles from here, right here, divided by a time, again, of 3 hours. So our velocity is going to be 0 0.67 miles per hour in the positive direction, this way, away from your house. So, we have two pieces of information, our velocity and our speed. Now, looking at each of these, can you say anything about your direction traveling in an average of 2.67 miles per hour? I don't think you can. You change direction over here, so it makes it a little bit difficult to say that you were definitively moving one way. However, when we're talking about velocity, since direction is implied in that measurement, you can say that you are definitely to the right of your house a distance of two miles, and that your average velocity the whole time was 0.67 miles per hour to the right. That's what that plus sign is going to mean, to the right. I'm going to give you a couple examples of speed and velocity. Uh, but mostly it's important in noting that you can't really have a negative speed but you can have a negative velocity all negative velocity means is that you're moving backwards Okay, that's a really quick introduction to speed and velocity, distance and displacement. It should be something that you covered in 8th grade. The next thing that we're going to talk about are motion graphs. Now, you made a motion graph yesterday in class. In fact, you probably should have done multiple things on your motion graph. You had displacement measured in meters. You graphed that against time measured in seconds. And I apologize already for this line not being straight. But <clears throat> let's say your graph looks something like this. This was the first person that walked. And this is the second person that walked. Now, as you graph this, the slope of your line is going to be the rise, because that's how we do slope, rise over run. Or, for us, since our rise means something, it's our, it's our change in position over our change in time. Guess what? That's just velocity. So the slope of this line corresponds to velocity. The slope of position, let's write that down. That's an important thing. So the slope of position versus time is velocity. So this is velocity 1, this is velocity 2. Now what you should be able to tell me between velocity and 1 and velocity 2 is uh, who is faster? Well, 
velocity 1 is greater than velocity 2. So that walker happened to be faster. If we look at that point right there, it's our y-intercept. What that really is, is initial position. It's where our walker was when we started our timer. That's a very simple thing about a delta x versus t graph. Now, what you get when you look at this, the equation of your line, and I'm going to do it in a very obnoxious color, the equation of our line is position as a function of time is equal to initial position Pin's not behaving right now. X zero plus the slope velocity times time. Now that should be familiar to you. It should look a lot like y equals mx plus b. These are my y values. These are my x values, and the slope is b. My initial position. No, I'm sorry. My slope is m, and my initial position is b. If you plug all those things in, this is the equation that you get. So let's take, let's take the blue one and do a different kind of graph with it. This graph is going to be velocity in meters per second versus time. Now, <clears throat> here, that slope, whatever you found it to be, isn't changing. So when we look at this graph of velocity versus time, our velocity is not going to change. This is a constant velocity. The slope up here, looking at either velocity 1 or velocity 2, is constant. The slope here is constant. That gives me constant velocity. Now, let's pretend we're looking at the slope of this line. The slope of that graph, again, is going to be the rise over the run. Well, the rise in this case is going to be my change in velocity, my run is going to be the change in time. What we call a changing velocity over time, acceleration. This is our definition for acceleration, and the slope of this line tells me about acceleration. We're going to look at a couple of more things about this particular uh, V versus T graph tomorrow in class, but I just want to give you a good introduction to that before we move on. That's it for this video.